To begin with, let's understand a few of the basics of working with Houdini's user interface and how to go about customizing it. Now, this interface layout which you see on my screen is the default that loads up with Houdini. If you go under the Windows menu, here under Desktop, this interface is called the Build Desktop. By selecting it, you should get the same desktop layout. For any reason, if it's not similar, go ahead and choose Reload Current Desktop and that should reset it to defaults. Now, once you have reset it to the default desktop, your color scheme might be slightly different. For this, under Edit menu, you can choose color settings and choose the color scheme you are most comfortable with. I'm going to leave it at Houdini Dark as my preference. Now for customizing the user interface, one of the easiest ways is that most of the menu items and shelf items have the small notch with an arrow on them, clicking on which toggles these elements on and off which gets you more screen real estate. Apart from that, most of Houdini's interface is divided into separate panes with additional tabs within them. You can go ahead and switch over to any tab by just clicking on them or also go to the new pane tab and select any tab you actually want to create. So you can actually create any number of tabs onto the same panel and have the same tab displayed in multiple sections also. Now, you can also go ahead, split a pane into multiple sections and add additional elements. To do this, go to the top right hand corner of any pane, click on this and select the split option you want to use, either split it vertically or horizontally. After you have split this, you can again go back to the new pane tab element and select whichever panel you want to actually create there. So like this, you can go ahead, re-edit the entire Houdini user interface. Once you've gone ahead and created any number of panels and added tabs into them, there are additional controls that Houdini provides you. As you can see, it has a notch here which lets you control the size of different interface elements. But also, by just clicking on the tab on this notch once, it toggles the position of these different elements. It exchanges them. Also, this notch has arrows pointing in different directions in the same place, by clicking on which you can actually collapse the entire panel itself. Also, once a panel is collapsed, by clicking on the middle notch, you can actually exchange the panel so even though you're in the same interface, you can toggle different elements at the same time. Now, let's understand how to go about navigating in the Houdini interface. For this, I'll go ahead and reset my build desktop first. There are several parts of the Houdini interface where we can navigate around. The two most important portions I'll concentrate on is the scene view, which is a 3D viewport, and the node graph, which is a 2D viewport. So, in the scene view, to navigate around, we need to have the camera tool selected. Once it is, we can use the left click to orbit around in the view, right click to dolly the camera in and out, and middle click to pan around. But these options are only available when the camera tool is active. Let's say we have any other tool active. In such a case, all of the mouse shortcuts are now different. To get back to the camera tool, we can use the space bar and this temporarily activates the camera tool and we still have all of the same options. For those of you who are coming in from Maya or any other package which uses Alt Navigation, we can go under Edit Menu, Preferences, 3D Viewports, here, enabling Use Alt Key for View Controls enables Alt Key Navigation just like Spacebar so that you can seamlessly integrate Houdini after coming in from a different package. Now, let us look at how to navigate around in the Network View. Because Network View is a simple 2D viewport, we only have option to pan around and zoom in and out. For panning, we use the same shortcut as in the 3D view, which is the middle click, and right click lets us zoom in and out pretty much anywhere in the entire network view. So that brings us to the end of this particular video and here we learnt about the basics of user interface and navigation. In the next video tutorial, I'll show you how to create objects and manipulate them. If you have any doubts, feedback or suggestions, put them in the comment below the video and I'll do whatever I can to help you. If you have found my material useful, please don't forget to subscribe, like and share. That's it for now. I'll see you in the next video.